Hey everyone, Coach Lee here, and the vlog is now here. That's it. <laughs> Do you need to try and keep it still though? I want to do for this first episode of the vlog is just go through a quick introduction of me, what I do, and a little bit of an insight into what I've got coming up in terms of training, which will obviously go in more detail over the coming episodes, which is all in preparation for my next race in September, which is the Ambleside 50k. In the gym, I'm just going to hit a uh, shoulder and arms workout. So at the moment I'm going through kind of a bit more of a hypertrophy phase of strength training with the body part splits. So chest one day, back another, legs another, and then shoulders and arms on another day. So this is the first week of this program. So uh, let's get into a little bit of shoulders and arms. Decentralized, can't contain it. We're changing lives, yeah, upgrading. Call it to a side of the old generation. Make all the demons quiet, yeah. We were built to thrive, yeah. I think that we've all had enough. What keeps you up at night, yeah. Make all the demons quiet, yeah. We were built to thrive, yeah. I think that we've all had enough. Oh, yeah. I think that we've all had enough. Sick and dealing with this old oh, plan. They know that we're calling them wrong. So who am I? What do I do? Well, I've been a fitness coach for 10 plus years now, uh, ever since I left the military where I was in bomb disposal uh, as one of my roles within the, the armed forces, including operations um, abroad in Afghanistan and Africa. After I left, I moved to Dubai and got into working with the UA military but alongside that that's where I started to get my fitness qualifications and start to build up even more experience of dealing with athletes from all backgrounds. Initially back in the day it was dealing with a lot of crossfitters helping them get more uh, competitive or just improve general mobility and strength and then I started to progress into more running coaching which is where you find me today. Uh, I am now a full-time running coach, qualified by UK Athletics, by USGA, um, and by Training Peaks. It's a passion of mine to help others, which is why I wanted to start this vlog as well, alongside my coaching practice, is to just try and help educate, inspire. For me, I love to impart as much knowledge to, to athletes as possible. I know some athletes don't want that, but I also know that a lot do. And certainly when I coach my athletes, I like to impart as much knowledge and understanding as possible. So if that helps them become much more of a self-sufficient runner and not necessarily even need me as a coach, I'm happy. I've done my job. That's my aim with my coaching. That's my aim in terms of the content that I want to produce and provide. And obviously Instagram and, and other social platforms aren't necessarily conducive to that where I'm trying to create 10, 20, 30 second videos to get across some detailed points of how to become a better runner. So YouTube is the place to do that. That's the key is whilst obviously you will be able to take away some value, I also want it to prompt questions. I also want you to, to want more information to expand upon that. And, and that's where obviously the, the comment section in the YouTube itself or just getting in touch with me via other means such as my email, which is on my YouTube channel as well. I want to help as many runners as possible. Running is a massive part of my life. It's, it's something I've done since I was a kid when I did my first 5K fun run at the age of seven. I ran competitively in the military. I've done some big epic races across the world such as Marathon de Sable, Coastal Challenge in Costa Rica and more recently the 6633 Arctic Ultra in Canada and, and for me 
training is all about allowing my body to do what I want when I want. So yes, I enjoy running, but for me, that is also a means to an end for me to feel like I'm fit enough and strong enough to do anything that I want when I want. I just like to create content that gives something back to the running community because the running has given me so much in my life. It's helped me through mental health battles after leaving the military and even, um, you know, sort of dark places that I've been to when I had my own gym business and uh, it just really helps me clear my head, uh, gives me a bit of solitude, reflection and obviously just the highs of completing crazy distance races or, or runs and stuff around the world so for me running has given me so much and my way of giving back to the running community is to produce videos such as this. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room and Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait A first time, a first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place I feel my Training for a uh, 50k race um, I haven't raced at that distance before. I've not even done a 50k official race, as it were. I obviously ran 30 miles or 30 odd and a bit miles. That's the other thing as well you've got to get used to if you watch my videos. I deal in miles, not kilometres, for those that deal in Ks. Sorry, not sorry. Um, but yeah, so I have my 50k race coming up. And my training program started pretty much at the start of June. I had a bit of time off after getting back from Canada. My body was wrecked from that race, dealing with minus 40 degrees. And I wanted to just have a little bit of fun with training before I got serious into the program. So I've given myself three and a half months to prepare for this race, which for a 50K, from my experience, as in my current experience and ability in training, is more than adequate for me. My training perspective when we're preparing for ultras is... Yes, obviously consistency is king. That's going to be the, the sort of the main principle that any runner should really rely upon. But the other big thing that we want to understand is the number one thing that you can do to get yourself better as a runner, as an ultra runner, and improve performance is to get fitter. Simple as that. Yes, obviously we can look at sprint sessions and these speed sessions and um, supplements and this, that, and the other, but the fitter you are, the faster you'll be able to run at your ultra race pace. And one of the best uh, sort of fitness attributes that we can develop as an ultra runner is your lactate threshold. So that's obviously that point up where um, lactate builds up within the blood and the waste products associated with that build up to the point where we can't clear it and that causes that muscle fatigue and reduction in pace. We can establish that through a fitness test, which I will be updating mine after I've done my first training block. And if we can increase that value, that lactate threshold, heart rate, lactate threshold pace, it means that we can operate at faster paces relative to our zone two, zone three, um, which means that we're going to produce uh, energy much more aerobically so you're always going to use all the energy systems but if we can predominantly produce ATP or energy aerobically then obviously we're not going to suffer those side effects and byproducts and therefore that fatigue so my first block of training in June four weeks is focused on improving that lactate threshold and we do that through tempos now as an ultra runner I prefer to prescribe tempos in interval format because we can then pad it out with recovery periods. Therefore, we can get more time on feet. Plus, then we can pad out a couple of miles warm up, a couple of miles cool down. And before you know it, you've also got some decent mileage within that session rather than just doing a 40 minute, 50 minute continuous tempo session, i.e., just running at a set pace for 40 to 50 minutes, which is, you know, great for half marathoners, marathoners, 10Kers, especially if they're running on road. But for those that are running on trail predominantly, which I, I I run pretty much exclusively on a tempo interval session is a great way for me to hit that level of intensity with a recovery period and then repeat that for a number of intervals and obviously over time increase my lactate threshold which I will test at the end of June just to know improvement but the reason I'm doing the tempo stuff now as I just said to you is one improve fitness because that's one of the best things that we can do as an ultra run in terms of training and two 
is there's also a, a basic principle of that we should do the least specific training furthest out from the race and the most specific training closest to the race. So in this respect, as an ultra runner, I'm not going to be running at tempo pace for my race. So that is the least specific element of training that's going to carry over. Yes, obviously I'm going to improve my fitness, which is going to allow me to then run at faster speeds within zone two, but that zone two, zone one pacing is going to be much more um, specific to how I'm going to execute a ultra marathon, which is why we leave that stuff till closer to the race. So what do you think of the uh, Dale's Way so far? It's lovely, very flyy. <laughs> But that's because of the beautiful weather, mm -hmm. and I'm sweating a lot. My top yeah. lip probably looks pretty red. <laughs> so we are spending our Sunday morning slash afternoon walking just a small section of the Dales Way from Staveley to Bowness, and we've chosen obviously a scorching hot day. Lots of flies around, but it is a very nice route so far. And um, we've only got about three and a half miles to go till we get to Bowness and, uh, and then it's beer o'clock. <laughs>